Thanks to TCL for sponsoring this video. I think when I hear $250 phone and maybe you, there's some preconceived notions for what you are going to get. You know, you might think you're gonna get a bad screen, a sluggish processor, not enough RAM, and overall just a really bad experience. And maybe us in the tech community are doing a disservice to the audience by kind of making a $500 be the threshold for budget. But there's a lot of devices that come in well below that and they're claiming to offer really good performance. So we wanted to test that. So with that in mind, I really wanted to see what 250 bucks gets you for a new phone. So this is the TCL 10L. It's the little brother to the phone we covered in a previous video, the TCL 10 Pro. The TCL name you probably associate with TVs, but they've been making phones for a long time. They were the ones that were behind the Alcatel brand. They made modern Blackberries, and the new generation of Palm phones. So they've been making phones for a while. They're just starting to put their actual name uh, on them. So for 250 bucks, you're getting a pretty full featured phone from a reputable company. You'd be able to buy this at most big box retailers. Software is obviously important. It's running the latest version of Android. You're getting four cameras on the back. So it's got a lot of features that you look for in a phone, but for 250 bucks, how good can that really be? So I think a big category and maybe a big area of concern with a $250 phone is going to be performance. So this performance is a combination of the Snapdragon 665 and a very generous serving of RAM with six gigabytes in the TCL 10L. So the combination of those two actually leads to a really smooth experience. And by that, I mean multitasking without any issue. Chrome tabs open, playing back HD video, all no problem. And you'd expect that, right? That's like a barrier to entry to just a phone being usable. We also wanted to test gaming, right? So we started with some lower intensive games, see how that performed, things like Candy Crush. And Unsurprisingly, there was no issue. So we ratcheted up a little bit more to test some of the most intense games you can get uh, on mobile. So we tested PUBG and Call of Duty. Uh, we couldn't change the settings, so it defaulted to kind of medium and that's where we left it. But performance was really good. It was smooth, it was 100% playable, uh, no issues. So that was a very nice area of surprise. Now don't mistake this for a Snapdragon 865 what you're getting with the 665 is still a capable processor and that six gigs of RAM I think is so smart at TCL to add in here. It makes everything run extra smooth. It's a giant safety net. And I think you really start to see it when you play those intensive games. I noticed no issues at all. Somebody handed me this phone and said what processor you're using. I could not tell you that it was running a 665 or something much more powerful on paper. And I think since it can handle gaming, it can handle anything else that you want to throw at it. Uh, photo editing, even video editing, if you wanted to try that on your phone. All of your social media stuff, web browsing and video playback, you won't have any issue. So that goes hand in hand with software. It's running Android 10 with the TCL software UI on top of it. And it's not a very heavy scan. It kind of augments what Android already does and is there. And overall, it was a pretty nice experience. Using the phone was smooth. The one area of concern with some of these budget or the lower cost phones is that the software you get is pretty much the software you're going to have for the duration of the phone. TCL says you'll get at least one major OS update and then buy monthly security patches for at least two years. And that's more than you can say for a lot of other phones. So it does seem wild to see a $250 phone with four cameras on the back, dual LED flash, and then another camera on the front. So five sensors that do essentially different things. And how good can all of those cameras be? Oftentimes one really good sensor can outperform you know, a bunch of mediocre ones. So your main shooter is a 48 megapixel. You've got a two megapixel depth sensor, a two megapixel macro camera, 8 megapixel super wide angle camera, and you can shoot 4K video at 30 frames per second. So I think cameras is one area where you need to maybe perhaps change your expectations for what you're going to get. Now the photos that you are going to pull out of here do generally look good. They're way higher contrasts than I'm used to seeing. I mean, the colors on the screen that are reproduced 
don't necessarily look like the colors that you'll see in real life. You take a picture of a beautiful green tree, they will be reproduced on the phone as kind of neon green. Uh, so if you like that bright contrasty picture, and a lot of people do, you're probably really gonna like the photos that come out of the 10L. You also get some cool features too, like that macro lens. We can get really close, and I don't know how often I actually use that in the real world, but it was fun to play with and fun to test. And the pictures that came out of it, again, looked pretty decent. So on the video side, it's a very similar story. I really like that it does 4K 30. Uh, but if you're taking video in low light, you end up with a ton of noisy images. Now, you're not gonna get a world beater camera here. I mean, you're not gonna get a, a hundred score on DxO Mark. You're not gonna beat sort of the flagship phones here. These are good, but certainly not great cameras. If your expectations with the 10L are to take photos and video that you can capture memories and share on social media, you will be very pleasantly surprised and happy with what you get. But if your expectations are that you can take incredible photos in low light, and that no matter what situation you're taking photos in, they're going to look amazing, then perhaps you might be disappointed. I think this is a matter of adjusting what you expect from your phone. If you do that, you'll be pretty happy. So display is one of the most important areas to me of a phone. This is one of the things that I was most worried about when I started looking and testing a $250 phone. So it's made by TCL, a company that's very well known and respected for making good television displays. And I was really happy to see that that acumen made its way over to the 10L. It is a very good LCD display. They call it a Dotch display. It's a 6.53 inch display and it's FHD plus. And looking at it, you would think it's a high-end phone with a high-end display. It's got a 91% screen to body ratio. So obviously bezels are incredibly small. Uh, color reproduction is really good too. You know, it's LCD, so you get really bright, vibrant colors. Uh, the blacks are still plenty black. Now they're certainly not OLED quality, uh, but they are very good. So all that might be due to TCL's Next Vision. It's kind of what they're calling their suite of tech that optimizes colors and makes things generally look brighter and more vibrant. And it's on full display uh, with the 10L. So aside from making you know the things on the screen you know look better, the Next Vision is also going to kind of upconvert SDR footage to HDR. This is one area where I think the phone absolutely outshines anyone else in a $250 price point. This is an incredible display and you can see TCL kind of flexing their display muscles here uh, with the 10L. That sort of good quality transfers over to the rest of the phone. So from a build standpoint, it is a plastic phone and it feels light in the hand, but that's not to say it's got a small battery. Uh, it's got a 4,000 milliamp hours. So when you take that kind of large storage size with the power efficiency of the Snapdragon 665 and an LCD display, uh, you've got a recipe for really nice battery life. So one thing I really do like is a fully customizable smart key on the side. So you could set it to open camera with one tap or open the camera with a double tap or open Chrome with a single tap. You can customize what it can do and how you interact with the phone. I really liked having that and I wish more phones had a customizable key. It just made the phone feel more personal to me. And also here is a headphone jack. Uh, you've got a fingerprint reader on the back, which was fast, efficient, and really worked well. Um, some things that you are missing that you might get on more expensive mid-range or top tier phones, an official IP rating uh, would certainly be among them. Wireless charging uh, would be among those things as well that are not here. Also, TCL is not really skimping on storage. So starting storage is 64 gigs. You could up it to 128. We also have expandable storage via micro SD. Uh, available in two colors, you've got this blue and an arctic white. So this phone obviously offers a lot. You'll be able to buy this at most big box retailers. So, you know, Amazon online, uh, Best Buy, Walmart, um, tons of other places where phones will be sold. But if it sounds like something that you want to pick up or you want to check out for yourself, we'll link to it down below. So that's the TCL 10L. And overall, you're getting a really good phone that does pretty much everything, some version of good. 
And I think phones that come in at 250 bucks offer an interesting, perhaps alternative to folks that are buying those $500 mid-tier phones. If you're gonna spend that $500 and get a new phone every two years, perhaps you're better off spending $250 and getting a new phone every year since the movement on how much better those $250 phones seem to get seems drastically improved year over year. So if you're the kind of person that wants to get something new but is also budget conscious and wants to keep what you have, it might be worth considering something like the TCL 10L. It's a really good feeling, decently performing phone that gives you a lot of performance and a lot of options for a really affordable price.